Hey everybody, this is The Fuzz and welcome to Let's Play Field of Glory 2. Field of Glory 2 is a recent game that just came out from uh, Byzantine and Slytherin, those are the developers, um, and it is based on a tabletop war game of the same name. Apparently it's the sequel to a game that I never played, that was pretty old, but I gotta tell you guys, I've been really blown away by this game. Um, it's pretty much a tactical battle kind of simulation um, with a grid form, and it's, it's kind of like chess. Well, it's a tabletop war game, so if, if, you've get, if you're already looking this up, I have a good feeling that you already know what this game is. Uh, and if you don't know what it is, then let me just get right into it. Um, Multi-battle campaigns are my favorite part of this game. Um, basically, it is a, um, it's like a series of battles, sometimes you know, between five and, and maybe seven or eight, I think, uh, battles that are connected together. And um, you know, basically, you make choices after each battle. Your performance in the battle impacts how many troops you're able to bring on for the next battle um, and it's it's a pretty cool concept and it's really well done and, and executed um, so what I want to do is play one of the actual campaigns that they've built so the rise of Rome campaigns um, you just kind of choose some nations and and you know fight along and those are fun but I want to do one of the ones that's a little more story based um, so I thought I'd start with Mithridates of Pontus um, I just think it's a really cool concept, and we'll get some variety, we'll get to fight Rome, we'll get to fight um, plenty of other different random factions. Um, and so this is set kind of in the era of the Republican Rome to the early Empire. Um, so without further ado, let's get this started. I'll, I'll read the little blurb at the bottom. Um, so this war follows the, the, I'm sorry, this campaign follows the wars of King Mithridates the sixth, Eupator of Pontus, and I'm sorry if my Greek slash Latin is bad. Um, Pontus was a small Hellenistic kingdom, southeastern Black Sea, from 115 BC, under the Mithridates VI, began to expand, taking control of the Bosporum kingdom in the Crimea. Um, so really, he's just doing a whole bunch of stuff, and the Romans weren't happy about it. So war broke out in 88 BC, when he attempted the invasion of Pontus. Um, and uh, and Roman and allied forces were defeated. So, you know, he'd beaten Rome already, and he is, has his kingdom, and Rome's not happy. Um, so this is kind of covering that whole era. And uh, two, two more Mithridatic wars followed, and Mithridad, Mithridates eventually fled the Bosporus, where he committed suicide. And his son, Farnassus, stayed, stayed a coup in 63 BC. So, not a great life, um, but he got pretty close. And for some reason, um, my mind's telling me that he was the guy who used to just feed himself a little bit of arsenic so that he can never be poisoned. Um, but hey. So yeah, this is the main campaign screen. Um, and so you can see that the battles kind of range from from Italy all the way over to... Um, I'm sorry, these, these are the factions that you're, you're fighting. Um, so we've got you know Pontus over here and Rome here. Um, difficulty is really good. I'm impressed at how it goes. And you can change the difficulty to get a little harder. Um, so I'm going to go progressive. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not very good at this game. Uh, I'm getting good at getting gooder. <laughs> getting better at it. But let's start at the tribunal level. And then by the time we finish, we'll end at League 8. So let's do that. All right. The year is 108 BC. We've sent our general Diophantos with an army to defend the kingdom of the Bosporus in the Crimea against the Scythians of King Pollicus and his Roxolani allies. So let's go battle. And I gotta say, load times are fast. Like everything really works out um, as far as you know first impressions. And I think the UI is really slick, especially for a war game. They've, they're kind of known for bad graphics. Um, at least that's my kind of assumption with war games, but this one just has not been a problem. All right, so our Pontic army is from the era of 110 to 85 BC, and the Scythian army we're facing is from 300 BC to 50 AD. Um, so there's more variety and less variety in some of these armies. Um, and battles are won basically by winning, um, or basically battles are won by routing at least 40% of their troops um, if you've only lost 25% or less. So basically you have to, to have 25% fewer troops lost, or if you hit 60% of their troops in terms of routing, 
um, then you'll automatically win. It kind of starts an automatic route of the rest of them. Um, and the, the battle maps are randomly generated in most of these campaigns, but you can get the, the sense of it. So it is you know, basically a tabletop war game, um, but there's a lot of variety. You can see that there are um, some hills here, and so we're kind of, you know, it shows you what the open ground is. Um, there's some rough terrain, um, various streams. Sometimes they're deep, sometimes they're small. Um, these are some old walled um, fields. So there's a lot of obstacles that can impact the, the game. And, you know, you can hide in marsh, you can hide in, um, in plenty of things. But let's keep it random. Uh, you can choose the troops you want, uh, or you can autofill. And I'm just going to autofill because... It's going to take up less time and get straight into the action. Um, and you can also auto-deploy, which is great. So let's auto-deploy. Um, basically what I'm looking for is I don't know how this army is going to line up, um, but what I need to look for is this is a really big um, issue. We have an obstacle here. We've got a stream here and a hill here. So basically this is going to be really... Um, this is going to be terrain that it's going to lead to disorder. And because I have so many troops that are... Um, spear based and this side pike phalanx uh, 304 and um, some pretty junk hillman type troops um, we're going to want to be able to make sure that we either stay back here or we can at least start getting going um, into this area but if the enemy front lines here yeah anyway we'll, we'll see we'll see so basically, I like the idea of using this forest as cover, advancing my light troops up here, uh, moving everybody up, and then using this cavalry kind of to pop out of the forest and smash into the front line while these guys hold it. Because let's be honest, um, if they're at a disadvantage against the Scythians, um, or if they're just kind of staying put here, we want to make sure that we are able to kind of pin them in place while our cavalry, which we have quite a bit of. We have a lot of cataphracts, which is awesome. Um, let's zoom in on those guys. Beautiful. Um, but we want to be able to utilize them. So uh, I think that's good for now. We can still, after you auto deploy, you can still move your troops around. So I want to get these javelin men. Um, actually, javelin men, this is one of my, um, one of the things of the game that I have to remember to keep track of. But it's that basically javelin men uh, don't have uh, uh, missile ability. Javelin men are a medium foot, as you can hopefully see there. Um, all right, so more cavalry. Let's move these up here, and then so so light javelin men are light foot, and they have javelins and light spear, whereas these guys just have light spear. So let's get started. Okay, so these are the Scythians. Um, And uh, lots of lots of cavalry. Okay. All right. So the marsh also hides troops. So I know that I saw some barbarian archers disappear into the marsh. So luckily, they probably have no idea that these archers exist. Um, but they have a lot of cavalry, which actually makes me less nervous about this hill stream obstacle course of little agricultural walls down here um, because these guys won't stand up to any of my heavier troops but the horse archer is going to be a pain in the butt javelin men are garbage um, let's see the king is king pelicus and he is a nomad horse archer um, so basically there's generals and sub generals and there's a couple of sub generals in each army and uh, one you know, commander in chief, basically, C and C. And so it's really helpful to destroy those units um, or concentrate fire on them and hopefully get those those particular generals killed because um, that'll impact your ability to win the battle, obviously. All right, so let's just move everybody up. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and move all of my horse archers up here. Good. And here's, um, see this is my sub-general, so I'm using him to kind of anchor this side um, so that they can't get flanked by any of the cavalry. So I'm, I'm just probably going to let him hang out there. Um, these troops, however, 
Like these are Roxolani cavalry. So these are superior quality, fully armored with lances and swords. And these ones are bow, light spear, swordsmen. They're superior too, um, but I'm fully armored and they're just protected. So I'm always gonna win in melee against them. So I'm gonna just take advantage of that. And now let us move these javelin horses up across the stream. So now they're gonna notice that my archers are around. Oh, not revealed. Wow, that's great. Still not revealed. Okay. So I'm just quietly moving these guys up here. And so these units still have no idea that my archers are in the woods. I honestly have no idea if that makes it so that when you attack, yeah. So we killed 12 of them. So even though it's kind of abstract, um, you know, you, it, the strength is an actual number of, of units. So it's just you know, 319 out of 342. So these archers just killed that many units, which is pretty great if you ask me. All right, so let's move those guys up. And um, I think that's all the action for one turn. Wow, interesting. <laughs> um, so what just happened there was, and I know it's kind of hard to see because I'm zoomed out. Here we go, let me, let's get in there. Okay, so basically what happened was the Eastern Archers attacked, they crossed the stream, and they tried to fight my troops in the woods, and so they got disrupted. And basically there's three steps um, for each battle. There's disrupted, uh, there's uh, fractured, and then there's routing. Um, and so basically what you want to do is keep on piling on the units that start to get uh, disrupted or then fractured and then routed. Uh, well, not routed because at that point they're already going. Uh, but you basically want to make sure that these units, uh, they're going to fight less well. They're going to um, lead to nervousness in other troops. So if you can start a route uh, based on one troop and the units around them are disrupted or fractured, um, there's a good chance you can roll up an entire area. Uh, just by using your troops uh, and, and concentrating. So I'm just going to keep on using my javelin men and just kind of keep these folks occupied. But I am going to concentrate my fire on these archers because I think I can freak them out sufficiently. Um, I'm just going to kill those guys because, I don't know, they're bothering me. Alright, so what's nice is we can pop out of the woods right here, surprise, and do some damage. And let's do a little more. So still disrupted, but they've, they've lost a lot of troops, so I feel pretty good about how many troops they've lost. Alright, let's bump everybody forward a little bit. Move the cavalry up slightly. Let's see, Javelin Horse has to be one away, so I'm going to just try to do what I can to get these horse archers. And I'm not sure how far away horse archers have to be before they can shoot. That looks like two tiles. Yeah, two tiles. Okay, that's fine. So it said held firm, but that means that there is a check to see if they would get disrupted or not. So, getting there. Uh, then this line, let's, um, I'm, I'm going in. Not all in, but I'm going in. So we got um, Subgeneral, Cataphracts, Armored Noble Lancers, Iranian Armored Cavalry. Um, then let's move these Cataphracts over here. Just kind of support the weaker horsemen with the, the stronger horsemen. Alright, and I think that is it for that turn. Perfect. So I'm assuming this water is the um, the Black Sea, based on if we're, we're in the Crimea or the Bosphorus or, or wherever. Um, Bosporus, rather. And we're fighting the Scythians. I'm a little nervous, but thankfully my troops are doing a lot better. 
then there's there. Yeah. Hmm. So their cavalry knows what I'm trying to do, and they're moving up to try to kind of head me off at the pass, so to speak. Uh, but meanwhile, they still don't know that these horse archers are here. And so what's nice is it tells you if you charge, what the impact is going to be. Are you going to win the impact? Or are you going to lose it? Uh, and what the melee is going to be. So let's say there's some chances where you'll win the impact, but then if you stay in melee, uh, you're probably going to lose the battle. It's like, you know, with horsemen versus um, spearmen, something like that. But let's just keep on concentrating against these guys. I'm getting disrupted. And I found that sometimes using multiple units like types of units to attack troops is helpful. So um, let's get these horse archers out and let's get them to turn and shoot. And even though the, the casualties might not be very high, it's still kind of you know shocking for that, that troop, basically. All right. This game is oh, good fragmented. OK, cool. So. They've already lost about 50 men in that horse horse unit, so in a good spot. Then here, let's just keep on hurting these guys. And I mean, sometimes the armies get real big, but here it's not so much. It's just two smaller armies. Um, so I'm just going to move all of my troops up. And you know, I've got to be honest, I feel like there's a hotkey that exists for me to move multiple troops up at the same time once you're, uh, basically once you're within five tiles of the enemy, you can't mass move your army up because I think the, the design was that your army is going to get way too disordered otherwise. Um, but I, I feel like there's got to be a hotkey that I'm missing. move these up. So imitation legionnaires are pretty good. They, I think they'll be able to sustain, sustain, uh, withstand the charge. I was going to say sustain the charge, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, and so rather than, than attacking, let's just leave some space here. So these guys, see they're moderately disordered because they're on the stream itself. Um, so I'm going to want to cross up a little more because these guys are steady, 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 and moderately disordered. Yeah. You don't really want a phalanx on a, on a creek when the whole point of a phalanx is that it's in tight formation. Alright, what's happening over here? Oh, interesting. Oh, okay, so they charged my cavalry. All right. And uh, Partitua, son of Targetai, is attacking as well. That's a lot of cavalry. Oh, boy. See, I haven't even hit any of their units of, of light kind of loose infantry and horse archers. Hmm. They're taking a lot of damage over there. Oh no, okay, so now they are starting to attack us. And so you can see this is what happens when the units are fighting each other, they're kind of locked in combat here, so you know you can't move them. Um, okay, good. So these guys are retreating. They're not routing, but they are just kind of falling back a little. So let's try to freak out some more of these. Fragmented. Good. Um, let's try to get these guys to route. Get in there. Um, you know definitely did not mean to do that, but misclicked, but not the worst thing in the world. And then uh, why don't we just attack from the flank? And they evaded, that's fine. 
So basically, the danger of charging with horses is that your troops will just keep on chasing them forever. So if they start routing, oh good, fragmented. Uh, basically, if this starts routing, these two units may just chase it forever, and that means that while they haven't routed, um, they're certainly not helping anything. So that's one of the things that I'm always kind of fearful of. All right, so these are pretty evenly matched. Um, if anything, their, their troops are a little better than mine here. Um, but I have an advantage in my noble answers there. And then, of course, cataphracts are going to have the advantage long term here over this general. So now I'm going to use these javelin men to attack the horses. And they are going to evade because, of course. Uh, but they do charge. That's what's nice. They're a little impetuous. Impetuous? I can't think of the word right now. But basically, you can flank charge some horses. And even though these are pretty garbage um, units, I mean, look at him. He's wearing like a toga with a little spear. But because he attacked from the side, he did some serious damage here. So then I'm going to move my imitation legionnaires up there and kind of fill in the gap with um, these guys. And then as for everybody else, I don't see any reason not to move forward here. Um, because even though they're, and actually because these are not phalanx, they're okay, but they're disordered on the creek. So I'm just going to keep on moving them up because I want to be able to do something um, and just kind of push these guys back and hopefully they get stuck amongst each other. You know, they, they can't retreat because there's a whole bunch of units stuck around them. And then I'll be able to utilize that to my advantage. And really, I'm just moving these troops up so that I can use some more of the, the troops kind of over here to flank. And uh, I guess I should move you. I'm not even going to bother with keeping this flank open because there's not enough here. And let's see. All right. Wow, th these guys are tough. They're they're down to almost half their original unit size, and they're still fighting. So, you know, what can I say? All right. So the light javelin men are, yeah. Not ideal. Yep, yeah, okay. So the horse archers, the javelin men, and the slingers all attack this one unit, and now they're disrupted. Also, um, they're on top of a stream, so they're probably not in the best condition. It's fine. Interesting. So this is kind of a mess over here. retreating good so I'm gonna let that be so I can use these cavalry to do some work and uh, some more of my light infantry got disrupted or my my auxiliaries but I think I'm in pretty good shape as far as the start of this battle goes um, I'm gonna need to bring something to bear pretty soon if I want to do anything um, but there we go, yeah. Okay, so let's let's focus first on these guys that are routing. So first, javelins up here go, are fractured, because I think I can get them to route soon. I'm gonna move these guys up here and just try to do a little bit. All right. And we're gonna target fire these guys. And I'm just going to charge. They're going to lose the bet. Actually, I'm not going to charge. That's a terrible idea. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. Let's turn around. And throw some javelins. And I'm going to charge. Yeah, there we go. Broken. And because I charged from the side, this is great. Rear attack. Fragmented. Okay, so that's kind of what I needed to do. So with these... This is what the, the power of these horse archers is. I was able to just turn half that all of a sudden, um, which means that these guys are loose. They're not chasing, thank God. 
these archers. They're going to attack here from the side. So instantly, I think next turn, I'll be able to route these. Uh, and then these little goofy archers here aren't going to do anything. All right. Cataphrax. Let's... Yeah, that's right. Run away. All right. Good start. This is still evenly matched, but let's see what I can do. Maybe I'll get lucky. It's always good. Alright, the general is disrupted, and I got more bad news. These imitation legionnaires are now operating straight up behind everybody. Okay, so that's the danger of pushing attack though, because <laughs> uh, then you get stuck, and all of a sudden these guys ran into the middle of a ton of cavalry and they're totally separated. So, not ideal. Alright, javelin men still attack the horse archers. Could have been better. Could have been worse. All right, you javelin men, go over here. And uh, so these guys kind of retreated finally because they got sick of losing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and attack. I am moderately disordered, which is not good. However, I can utilize my flexibility here um, and do a flank charge. So they're going to lose long term, but constant flank charges are going to hurt these guys a lot. And then I'm also going to flank charge. Um, perfect. So I, I kind of rear attack these guys. And so even though they're going to lose a long term battle, that's great though, because now this is all thrown into chaos. I can utilize these guys to really pin down the general here. Um, and then, let's see. Let's go forward. Go forward. Straight up attack. Maybe I'll actually... Interesting. So I'm going to lose the, imp the impact, probably. I might draw. Um, but the melee, I'm going to win. So it's worth it. Cool. Alright, these javelin men are garbage, so I'm going to use them to support the attack here. And then let's move these guys forward. Let's move these guys. And so I don't want to charge because if they charge, they engage, or they lose. I don't want to have the same thing as what happened to the imitation legionnaire, where they end up in, you know, somewhere back here, and then all of a sudden this cavalry is open to attack. Um, so the whole point is to be able to kind of push forward slowly and surround the, the king and his horses there. So meanwhile, I gotta get these guys out doing some stuff. So I'm gonna use these troops that I had in reserve and move them forward and kind of use those to help back up the imitation legionnaires and get some cavalry to attach from the flanks. All right, so rallied is what just happened with that uh, horse archer and it kind of means that they're not under attack or events in the battle mean that it's uh, going better. So it went from fractured to disrupted. And you can even come back from routing. Um, the only, you know, basically it goes disrupted, disrupted, fractured, routing, and then dispersed. And that's when, once it's dispersed, it's gone. Um, but if it's routing, there's always a chance that it can rally. Um, and even then a fractured unit probably halfway across the map because it was running isn't that great, but it's it's better than nothing, so there we go. Okay, so that's what I was worried about. The cavalry attacked from the side, but thankfully these guys carry spears, and so the flank attack wasn't as dangerous as it could have been. Okay. Still retreating. I like, I mean, I kind of have a line. It's a sort of. This cavalry is really kind of in a... See, that's good. I just rallied too. So those, those three Ophirai, um, they managed to cross the stream a little bit and did well. Great. Disrupted. Excellent. So this subgeneral is in really bad shape right here. OK, 
Okay, so let's start over here. Um, I lost that, but that's fine because I can just keep on flank charging. I'm gonna lose the actual melee, but I'm gonna keep on winning the charges, except for right there. Okay, embarrassing. Um, but thankfully this cavalry is a lot better than that, so I'll slowly wear them down. And now since they're stuck in melee here, I'm gonna just keep on working. Yeah, they're losing a lot of troops right there. All right, let's flank attack these guys, just because I wanna get some more freedom. Uh, of movement with these armies because basically I want to move these up here I want to attack with these good um, let's about face these so I can uh, approach them and then I think I've got these guys stuck yep so they couldn't do anything for the impact and I'm definitely going to win against some javelin men. Perfect. And hopefully I can actually get them to route this one. No? Okay, held firm. But still, good start, good start. Alright, next, let's attack these horse archers. Good. So what I hoped would do was just free up these imitation legionnaires. Oh, I don't know why I made the same mistake as before. So now he's like literally surrounded by cavalry. Great. All right, let's use these guys to scare them a little. Let's try to make, give them other concerns. Okay, that'll do. Javelin. Flank charge. Oh, that's a good start. So the first one to go in this whole line of cavalry fights might be the, the actual sub-general himself. All right. Meanwhile, here, these guys are fractured, but that hasn't stopped us before, huh? All right, so I can't move past these guys because they're controlling that. And they are killing my light javelin them pretty well. I guess I have to turn. Turn. I really thought I'd be able to roll this whole area in one turn. But apparently not. Okay, finally disrupted. Jeez, it took long enough. Okay, so this is a mess. That's fine. Um, now let's see what I want to do with these. Let's see if I attack, they're probably going to just... Well, whatever. I'm going to charge anyway. Perfect. Let's see if I can... Okay, well... This is why no one likes fighting horse archers. Okay, so that, that uh, sub-commander rallied, but... I just can't see how he's... Oh my god, they're all rallying. That's not good. I still have a slight edge. You know, they've lost 3% of their army. But again, I gotta get up to 40%. And only if I've only lost, I think, 15% of my troops. So... Got some work to do. Like, really what I'm just trying to do is kind of shove all the units into this corner of the map. And if I can get up a bunch of them to flee before then, all the better. So they're retreating towards me. What? And then all these dumb javelin men are up here. Oh, perfect. Like I just routed. pretty happy with how things are going. It 
some of the sub generals are just really intense. Like this guy, look at him, he's got 175 out of the 360 original troops, and he's still fighting. Whatever. Alright, disrupted, good. Maybe I can actually break him right now. Perfect. So auto breaks is as far as I can tell. Look at I charged the ghost cavalry, they weren't expecting that. And disrupted immediately. Perfect. So things can change pretty quickly in a battle too. Um, geez. And so that guy auto breaking is helpful. All right, let's see what's going on here. First of all, let's go. I th yeah, I just need more to auto break because this is ridiculous. And they're so fractured, they've literally killed zero people. That's fine. What happens if we flank attack these guys? What do you guys do? What do you do? Nothing. Of course, nothing. And let's charge. They both killed one. Alright, well, we're getting somewhere. Let's try to get these guys nailed down. Perfect. So that's one of the dangers with when these guys run. If you catch them, it's really disastrous. these here and then these guys let's try to catch these Ugh, that's too bad I was hoping he would attack them but nope so Diophantos of sign up my commander is attacking King Pelicus all right and now let's try to get these guys to freak out Please, please. Ugh. And these ones will not last long. Yeah, disrupted already and fall back. Perfect. And let's just go ahead and flank charge them. They don't make it easy. Oh, maybe I'm actually going to pin everybody in the middle here. That's fine. Yes. Alright, and he's broken. That is great news. And he chased him down and caught him. Perfect. So they've lost 14% of their troops already, and this battle is a total mess. But I have the upper hand, as far as I can tell. Dispersed, yes. So some of their units dispersed, but yet more of them rallied, so there you go. That's part of the problem when they have all these light troops that can run really fast. I just think it's funny, I shouldn't have put my general in a stupid cavalry, or in a stupid phalanx unit against a bunch of horse archers. Alright, the javelin men are moving up, which means I need to have some infantry to meet them in some type of order. Okay, good. So they did attack here, and they're fragmented now. I really thought that my troops over there would be less fragmented now. So the danger with not pursuing some of these fleeing troops that we can see, you know, right here, for example, is they might rally. Oh man. Dangerous, dangerous times. 
I'm losing this cavalry engagement right here. So I'm gonna have to use these javelin. Oh good, more broken troops. Alright, so let's just start with this engagement. I'm losing, so javelin mana flanking from the sides is a good way to, to make up some ground. And really that's the only way that I have a chance of winning. Otherwise I think they'd wear me down. Okay, good news. So these guys are somehow over here, which is stupid. So I'm going to ignore them. I'm just going to try to kill the rest of their friends. Which is very difficult now. And I'm going to charge because they're running away. And... Alright, didn't do anything. It's fine. Alright, now javelin men, turn around and kill these guys. It's like embarrassing for everybody. Ah, oh, they actually killed three of them. Good for them. Alright, now kill some of them. The good news is these guys might route. Yep. Good, good, good. Imitation Legionnaires. Should we do it? I'm gonna do it. Oh my god, they actually stayed. That's great. Alright, now you guys, let's attack these, and they broke, perfect, because on a charge there is a chance of them breaking, and that's what I was hoping would happen. This general is chasing those guys, so he's not letting me do anything, because he's impetuous, and um, I'm going to just turn, well, let's get back to them. So we're barren archers or nomad horse archers. What if we... Get right in the middle of it. Alright, I'm gonna just make this guy a square because he's surrounded by cavalry on all sides and he is my general. Alright, good. So let's try to get some uh, backup. Backup approaching. And I'm also trying to, like I said, reform the line to an extent. Alright, now these guys. Horse archers attacking someone from a flank. Always a good call. Well, not always, but generally. Um, flank charge. I'm going to flank charge these two, just because I think, yep. Javelin horse versus horse archers isn't exactly the most winning of, uh, you know, battles, but... And I can flank with my general. That should totally route them. Ah, almost. Still. So that is a very positive change. And I think that that's that for that turn. Oh, I don't even know when to see horse archers. Eh, might as well. Let's turn around to deal with them. Hopefully, if I can route them off the map, good. Quite a bit of routing. I still have lost 0% of my troops, and they've lost 27% dispersed. Perfect. So one of the subgenerals will not be coming back, and all of a sudden I have an entire flank. Then the right flank is entirely one. It's perfect. Maybe I should have set the difficulty a little higher. Um, but this is also just one battle, and... I have superior troops, so, you know, it maybe it was a foregone conclusion. And it's also the first battle of, I think, six or seven, so it's going to get harder as time goes on, and the armies are going to get a lot better, you know, the ones that I'm facing. Okay. And they can retreat off the map, even when they're not routing, but they'll, they'll come back. Please die. I just need this unit to start dying. The world's worst battles of one versus one. Yes, they broke. Okay. Interesting. So 
we got some some in the thick of it battles. All right, let's attack these guys because I just want to chase them around if I can. Perfect. I don't want them to uh, become a problem in this little cavalry engagement corner. So what I like about these battles is that it does feel like very tactical. Um, like I have to worry about all these things that in Total War I, I don't think I would worry about as much. Um, but then, you know, I also don't know how much of this just wouldn't come up in Total War because you'd have more of a uh, engaged flank or, or what have you. But they are severely disordered because they're in Marsh. That's why I can't attack in the forest. Yeah, I'm not even gonna gonna try. But I am actually gonna go closer so I can use my uh, arrows. Oops. Killed one of them. This is when it gets kind of funny to me. It's like, okay, three killed three. Okay. Um, but I have these guys pinned down, which means that, oh no. <laughs> um, I'll be able to flank them with cataphracts, which not exactly the type of troop that you want to run into. And uh, I'll keep on trying to flank these guys. They're disrupted. Great. Let's turn them here. And cataphracts can take a lot. So I'm just going to go straight into this nonsense. And again, I'm just trying to make my line work out a little better. So my line is pretty good right now. Oh good, they actually hit these archers. I love when that happens. You charge and they just keep on running. Alright. Let's lose the square. Because I actually feel a lot better about my uh, position. Alright. That's good. Now let's... Um Flank attack these guys. Let's move these units up. Move these units up. Let's uh, turn these that way. Turn these guys straight. Move them over here. So this is kind of the mid-battle maneuver phase, I think, where I'm just trying to cl clean up what I do have going. All right, I think this is pretty good. Um, I'm hoping, I honestly am hoping that everybody here attacks my, my sub-general, um, just because I think that that would mean that I'd be able to utilize these guys. Okay, disperse. See, I don't even know there's someone in the woods. Whatever. But because someone rallied, they went from 27 to 24%. If I can just get them to retreat off the map, then I'll still win the day. I didn't realize there were horse archers left. Boy, they're really just going to town. I definitely have the upper hand, but... You know, it's to the point where I'm worried that I have the upper hand for now, but that things can change. Um, but at least I'm making some good progress for a lot of these. Okay, finally disrupted. Okay. I'd really like to kill King Palicus. Thanks. Break in, break in, break in, break in. Fragmented and falling back. Good start. And they're routing now. Perfect. Oh, it's because these guys charged them. Okay, good. 29%. Flank attack. Ugh. Ooh, rear attack. Even better. And fragmented. Excellent start. I'd like to see those guys 
feel comfortable now. Alright, good start. Now you guys just keep on running across the map, who cares? Uh, let's move up. Uh, why don't you go over here? Move up. Eat it, King Pelicus. And Theophantos is engaged against their king. That's what I needed. I just gotta try to get some units behind him so he won't be able to escape. Okay, so that's pretty good. I've got him pinned now. flank attack, they might lose all cohesion. Yep, disrupted, and breaks, perfect. There's a chance that they might route too. No, no routing. All right, maybe if we can get these guys to route. All right, so soon they'll go. Meanwhile, I'll just keep on killing you. I like how these guys are so fractured and yet they're still killing a bunch of people. I should really just start fighting them, but I kind of like the idea that they're surrounded and they're just getting shot. And these stupid barbarians in the woods. I'm going to lose this engagement over the long term, but that's fine. Okay, and then let's move you over here. Move you over here. And you're routing, so I don't care about you. Let's move up there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. The question is, at this point, how many turns until the end of battle? I don't have to get all of this area to break, you know? I just need to get a little bit of it. But they did flank attack my phalanx, which is never a good thing. Thankfully, that subgeneral is actually a bunch of javelin men, so phalanx versus some dudes with crappy spears is not going to do much. The horse archers are doing a number on my, my wonderful cataphracts, though. Yeah, see, there's just the like, things in the woods. Everyone must have hated this, uh, this stuff in real life. They're like, oh great, now I have to go up to the Bosporus and fight these dudes that just run around and shoot bows out of the woods. Alright, come on, King Palicus, please die. Not yet. You die. Eh? Eh? Yeah, there we go, breaking. Perfect. And these devilmen are still there, so I can flank attack those guys. Auto breaks. Alright, King Palicus is running like a coward. I might win. Wait, this I might win after this. Yep. Yes. Perfect. So, one thing I wish they would represent is everybody just turning, um and routing. Basically, you know, everyone routed. The king just routed, so he's running. Everybody's dying. They've lost 40% of their troops, and I have lost 0% in terms of routes. Um, I wish they would do that, but, you know, future. But I still won. So excellent. I felt good. And it was a glorious victory. So they lost 50% of their troops. They lost uh, almost uh, 5,600, and I lost uh, just close to 1,900, so 12% of my troops. Um, a lot more were wounded than were actually killed, but um, what's nice is I captured, I actually captured or deserted, or they had desert uh, 2600, and I killed a lot of their troops, so. Good, very good. I did have more units than they did, but. All right, so that's the, the end of that first battle. 
uh, softer stage uh, two of seven, and uh, I'll talk about that next time. Thanks for watching. Once again, this is The Fuzz, and we are playing Field of Glory 2, the Mithridates of Pontus campaign.